Hey guys, it's Rick back from Maple Syrup Tech. So today we're going to be doing a guide to how we can update our BIOS in 2017. Honestly, the 2017 part is superfluous in the sense that not much has changed over the years. But still, uh, in one of my last videos, which was the unboxing of the ASRock uh, AB350 um, Pro 4, I had a couple of requests because I mentioned that I could make a video for updating your BIOS and some people wanted to see it. So what we're going to be doing today is a general BIOS update guide, so how to do it. And I'll be honest with you, we're using the AM4 platform today, but not much will change if you're on Intel on any of the recent platforms or whatnot. So the guide we're going to look at today is good for pretty much every modern motherboard, I'd say in 90% of the cases. Now before we start on the actual update to the BIOS, a couple of things I want to go over. Number one, as the regular, for all, every time we're talking about a BIOS update, I always do the disclaimer, be very careful because this is one of the only things that can actually brick your whole motherboard. Meaning that you have to actually send it back often to the manufacturers to be reset. Because if there's anything that goes wrong during your BIOS update, like a power outage or the system freezes up or something like that, you can actually brick your motherboard, meaning that your system will just not boot at all. Okay, so it's very important that before doing a BIOS update, you make sure that your, your environment is as stable as possible. There isn't a huge thunderstorm or something outside, or you're not in a peak, uh, a peak hours of like, if you're in a, in a city where there's a lot of, you know, uh, power delivery problems, where you could lose power at any moment, sometimes when the, when the network's like overworked and stuff like that. So that's the first disclaimer. Number two, I want to specify this is not the only way of updating your BIOS. We're going to look at the way that I think 90% of the people out there are using or should be using. However, there are generally three ways of updating your BIOS. And on average, your motherboard should support at least two of the three methods. Uh, the first method that we won't see today is updating it through Windows. The reason why we're not looking at this method and why I don't recommend it is that in my opinion and by my experience of over 15 years of building computers, it is the one that is most probable to uh, brick your, uh, actually get a problem and possibly brick your motherboard. Because in the 15 years, the only time I've actually bricked the motherboard is using a update through Windows. Reason why is because Windows froze up midway through the update. It was a brand new system, you're building it, so sometimes, you know, Windows is going to get all the updates and whatnot, and when it's overworked and the drivers aren't necessarily 100% installed yet, well, mm, the, the, the update basically froze midway, which meant that my system froze, had to restart it, and unfortunately, I was mid-BIOS update. That's the main reason I don't recommend it. It's I've had bad experiences with it, and also it's the one I would say that's supported by the least number of motherboards overall, okay? Number two, the second method we won't be looking at is the update through DOS, which basically means you have to make a bootable like uh, hard drive, a bootable CD or a bootable um, USB key, and you actually boot into DOS before your system starts up and you do the update that way. It's sort of an automated process with a DOS command. Um, the reason why is because basically it's a lot harder than doing it directly through the BIOS, which is the way we're going to look at it. And there's no real advantage to doing it. I would say it's as stable as doing it through the BIOS. And it's harder because you have to make a bootable USB key. You have to know the DOS commands. For someone who's maybe on their first time building a system, it's probably the most complicated of the methods. So what we're going to look at today is the one I recommend, which is using the in most motherboards nowadays come with a built-in flash program for updating the BIOS. Uh, it can be called Easy Flash on some, it can be called different types of programs. So we're going to start today from the very beginning how to get your BIOS update. Now we're going to be looking at the ASRock site because my board's an ASRock, but it can honestly from one manufacturer to the other the steps and the way to get to it on the site vary very little. And actually, I have a video showing each one of the manufa major manufacturers and how to get to the BIOS updates in other videos, which I'll link below. It's using, once again, the AM4 platform, but as you see when we go through the steps, instead of clicking AM4 in the list of motherboards, you click whatever socket you're using, and they will basically give you the list of motherboards that you're looking for. So, 
Like I said, without further ado, let's start. Let's go get the BIOS update. So where can you find this famous, you know, the BIOS? Where can you download it and what to do with it? So basically, number one, on the Azure website, we're going to go to products. We're going to choose motherboards. There we go. Now in the motherboard section down here, okay, we have the socket types. So what we're looking for today is an AM4 board. So we're going to choose the AM4 boards and we're going to go through the list and find our board. Mine is right here, the AB350M Pro 4, the Micro ATX version. When you're choosing a BIOS, it's very important that you choose the exact board you have. I'll give you an example here, the X370 Killer SLI with the uh, Wi-Fi integrated or without the Wi-Fi, it's actually not the same BIOS. You can't take the one, and I've tested it you because I have that board as well. You can't take the one with the Wi-Fi version and put it on the one with the out the Wi-Fi version. Okay, most boards nowadays won't even recognize the BIOS, so it won't let you make the mistake. But if you could, it's another reason you could brick your motherboard. So you have to make sure that you're getting the exact model of motherboard you have. So let's choose here the AB350. Okay, and now we're going to go to the support section here, not the support section at the top because this is going to bring you to the support section of the complete site, but really the support section of the specific motherboard you're looking at. And here we're going to go to the BIOS section and you have the list of BIOSes. And here, like I said, look, you have a list, you have one update through what's the method, how to update. We have the same update here through the BIOS or through DOS. So through DOS is the one we're not going to be using. We're going to be using the one through the BIOS. So it's very important that you also download the right version for the method you've chosen or else the computer will simply not recognize it at all. So we're going to download the one from the BIOS right here. Oh, actually, sorry about that. That's to get to the steps. Sorry, just choose your server here at the end. Very. And as you see here, oh, hold on, I have to move myself out of the way. Our BIOS is updated right here. So the next step is simply to slip that file onto a USB key, which I'm pulling out right now. Let's put that in there. We're gonna open my system. We're gonna go to our downloads. We're gonna find the AB350 Pro download here. I'm going to copy it, not cut it, just so that in case I decide to use a different USB key, I have another copy. And we're going to paste it right here. So we have our, we have a, right here our update for the AB350 Pro 4. Okay. So now we're ready to go. We're going to start the actual BIOS update. Now we're going to have to switch it. I won't be on a capture anymore because updates are done through the BIOS. So I'll be setting up a camera in front of the screen and we're going to be following the, for the, the next few steps, not from a direct screen capture, just because I'm not set up to actually capture when we're in the BIOS. I would have to have a separate system with a separate capture card, which I'm not set up for that right now. So we're going to be switching to a camera. So I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds. Hey guys, we're here in my shop. So don't pay attention to the resolution of the screen or any of that because my test bench, as we saw in the previous video, was just set up. So I haven't installed any of the graphics drivers or anything. So we're running off of the basic drivers that comes with Windows 10. Now, uh, what we're actually gonna do is uh, take the file that we just downloaded, okay, and we put on our USB drive now that we're in our system. We're just gonna wanna extract it before uh, we go any further. Perfect, and so here we have the file that is now extracted. We're gonna take it and put it directly on the drive, okay? So you want the, you want the file on the drive without being in a folder or anything like that. So here we have our update file, okay? This is the original, the, the uh, compressed file. I put it on the desktop and uncompressed it just so that you guys could follow along. If anyone doesn't know how to uncompress, you just right click, you say extract all, and you extract it to wherever you want, whatever folder you want. And then you, let, you go in and you grab the file that you need, okay? Which in this case, there's only one file to grab. Another quick thing that I forgot to mention in the first video, you also have to make sure that your uh, USB drive is formatted in FAT32, okay? That it's not NTSF. If it is, all you do is before you start all this, 
you go to format here and you make sure that the file system is on FAT32 and you do a quick format, okay? In my case, my drive was already in FAT32. If it's not, once again, you right click the drive, you click the format option, you change the file system here, you would be on NTSF, you would switch it down to for FAT32, you check off quick format and you do start, you wait a couple of seconds, your computer will reformat the drive in FAT32, and then you reinstall your files on your uh, USB drive. Okay, it's just because the BIOS does not recognize NTSF, so if you are in that format and your file's not showing up, it's most likely because you're in, formatted in the wrong version. So the next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna restart the computer, okay, because we have to enter the BIOS. To do that, you restart the computer, and when the screen is gonna flash for the manufacturer of your motherboard, you're gonna spam the F2 key for most uh, manufacturers. For ASRock, for Asus, I know for sure that it's the F2 key that you have to spam for modern motherboards. For other manufacturers, if you're not sure, all you have to do is when your computer starts up, look at the bottom right corner of the screen, which would be right about here. When the logo of the manufacturer of the motherboard pops up, in the bottom right corner, it'll tell you which key to push to enter the BIOS. The only thing is that by the time you see it, it'll probably be too late to hit the key, meaning that you'll have to start your computer over again and spam the key as the computer is starting up. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna restart the computer, you're going to hear me spamming the F2 key when once the computer is completely shut down and has started its boot up process, like that. So here I am, I'm going to spam the F2 key till we're in the BIOS. Keep an eye out, you'll see for a couple of seconds on the bottom right, you see right there it says, it said right there on the bottom right, press F2 if you want to enter the BIOS. Okay, so here for the ASRock UFI, we're going to move over to the Tools tab right here, okay? For different manufacturers, the look will be a little different, but it'll be pretty much the same thing. For Asus, for example, you have to go into your Advanced tab, which I believe is F7, and then move over to the Tools. But if you follow the prompts on screen, it, will, it won't be difficult at all. And like I said, you'll have a utility here called like Easy Flash. In the case of ASRock, it's Instant Flash. So it'll, the name will vary from one manufacturer to the other, but the options will remain you know, grossly the same. So with our Instant Flash, automatically it found the file that we put on our USB drive. And like I said, most motherboards nowadays will isolate. If you saw my USB drive, I had other files on there. It doesn't show up at all. It's, you, it's showing up only the files that are compatible with your motherboard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press enter because yes, we want to install it. Now it's gonna tell you, do you want to update your UFI? Most systems will ask you a second time because like I said, it is a slightly risky process. So it's not to be done every like two weeks when a new BIOS. Only update the BIOSes that have important updates for functions you need. For example, for Ryzen, the reason I'm updating is to have the maximum memory compatibility. I want to make sure that I have AGSA code uh, 1.0.0.6 to make sure that my memory, my RAM compatibility is at its maximum. So we're going to click yes, and the system is basically going to automatically update your BIOS. Honestly, uh, there's not much left to do. We're gonna still go through the process. I'm gonna fast forward it a little bit for the update process. And then we'll see, uh, I'll come back to you when it's about at 95%. Okay guys, we're back and we're hitting that 100% mark in a couple of seconds. So as you saw, that was the end of it. We uh, hit 90, we hit 100%. Then it basically says all you have to do is reboot your system, which we are going to gladly do. Now that was the dangerous part of the process because if anything failed or there was a power outage during the update process, that was the where you could have possibly bricked your motherboard. And now what we're gonna do is when the system starts up again, we are gonna spam F2 once again to make sure we enter the BIOS again. It always takes a couple of seconds more when you've, up, when you've installed a new BIOS, the time that the system recognizes all the hardware and whatnot. So don't be scared if your startup process takes a little bit longer than usual. 
Okay, well basically here you can see that microcode update's been done. So we have our uh, basically UFI version 3.00. So that's what we were looking for. You can now see I just went through the options to make sure everything was, was A-OK. -okay. There we have our uh, update is now done. So we are now running version 3.0 with the proper AGSA code in my case, which is the reason of the update. But you know, any motherboard you buy, if you see that your, your, um, your BIOS version is far behind what is currently used by the manufacturer. It's not a bad idea to update it. I just always remind you guys, tiny bit of risk when this is happening because if you do fail the BIOS update, well, unfortunately it can break your motherboard. But honestly, it's not any harder than that. And that's why I specifically, like I said, out of the three methods, this is why I chose this method. It's the easiest of the three. The only things you need to look out for is make sure your USB key is, is, is formatted in FAT32. Make sure you uncompress the download you get from the manufacturer. And I recommend, like I did, putting the file directly in the USB key without being in a folder. Most manufacturers nowadays will recognize that you'll be able to enter the folder and find the file. But it's possible sometimes that your update tool will not find the update unless it's directly in the root directory of the USB key, like not in any folders, basically. So there we have it. Our uh, full up BIOS update guide is now done. So as usual, I'm going to be ending the video here. You know, no need to do a whole conclusion where you see my beautiful face again, but uh, likes are appreciated. Uh, subscriptions are even loved. And you know, the more we go to channel, I say it every time, but the more videos I'll be able to make and better videos with more hardware. So I hope to see you guys next time.